then to continue on this is an interesting point right this is funny do you remember when brenda was going after bren dana white and the ufc because of what ufc 279 right that was the one with um what's his face um hamza shimaev and that whole controversy around the fight with flipping nate diaz and blah 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 right he 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 made up this weird con you know conspiracy theory in his head that the ufc kind of did it all on purpose and made hamza miss weight so that they could change the fights because they realized the fights weren't selling well something weird whatever he went to really die on that hill and he used it as a basically as an excuse to basically dog on the ufc dog on dana and basically just try to you know stir up a bit of hassle because he was maybe bored or whatever it's funny because off the back of that it then turned into an issue where joe rogan came on his podcast and said quite matter-of-factly oh you know brendan basically talks a lot of rubbish and needs a handler that's the kind of phrase he used right he needs a handler and i think we know that that comment really hurt the guy because he went on his show after and tried to kind of play it off and, you know, and tried to do a Crystalia type, you know, rant about it and make it seem like he wasn't bothered. But clearly he was. And also the fact that Joe Rogan said he needs a handler was clearly proof, especially in public, was clearly proof that their relationship isn't as good as it was before. Right, Joe Rogan and Brenda were super close to the point where Brenda was one of the, you know, the guests that was on Joe Rogan the most. Uh, I think he's still got the record to this day, and clearly the relationship has changed over the years because of all the stuff that Brenda's got into. I don't need to kind of rehash over it again, but clearly something has changed their relationship, and you know that that comment hurt his feelings because he mentioned it again here. This is a conversation they're having on a recent episode of The Fire and the Kid. And they're talking about the whole Kanye West stuff, right? And how he's getting cancelled and how maybe he doesn't have any good, real friends around him and he needs someone to tell him, you know, that he's fucking up and stuff and call him out on his bullshit. This is a conversation they're having. And in this conversation, Brendan kind of shoehorns and kind of forces um, his kind of, you know, situation with Rogan and the Dana White and UFC thing into it too. So you can clearly see that it's still something that kind of bugs him and still something that kind of annoys him and made him a little bit upset but it's a very interesting way that he's kind of trying to paint it let's see he's fine but it, it, it's ultimately man did you fuck up dude man did you mess up what were you thinking and this comes and, and i know I'm, what he was thinking he was fan. thinking what a lot of people and think. i'm a fan he was thinking what a lot of people in the world think that's the problem a lot of uneducated stupid people there's a lot of and happening. you have all the resources in the world you what you need is a better team around you, you have all the resources in the world I see Kanye, you know this from time to time. I see him all the time. The people around you should be ashamed of themselves that they allowed you to do I don't do think he's this. controllable, Bubba. I don't think you even know what the fuck he's going to do ever. I don't think, I think the minute you tell him what to do, you get fired. I don't think that the problem with, with power. The funny thing about that is that you could also say that about Brendan, right? The moment anyone steps up to him or basically talks back, they get fired. There's a long, not say long list, but there's a list of people who, you know, big up Malik, who basically stand up to him and say something maybe against what he says or maybe question what he says. And quickly, he kind of, you know, puts them in their place and basically says, hey, you can do that anywhere but here. Power like that is you surround yourself with people who are looking for a paycheck and they just know they're dealing with crazy and they just yes you to death. So they get the money. But that's probably have all the yes men. Like, but that's what he does. Well, I, I'd say. Can you imagine? I'd say, I'd say, I'm, listen, Joe Rogan's not as influence. Uh, uh, he's not as big or as, as I, I don't know, as much influence as Kanye West. Kanye West is. Oh, look at him talking out of turn about Rogan. Look at Brian Khan's face. He's like, uh, 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 be careful. I just got back into his good graces. What are you going to say about Daddy Rogan? Relax. Brendan's out here saying that Rogan isn't as influential as Kanye West. In previous years, he would have said Rogan's as big as Kanye West. Rogan's the biggest thing since sliced bread. Without Rogan, the world would not spin. Now he's questioning Rogan's influence. Oh, there's definitely trouble in paradise. Real. He's our Steve Jobs of rap, right? He's our Steve Jobs of entertainment. Rogan's definitely influential when it comes to comedy and podcasting. But even Rogan has more money than God. But if Rogan posts some or something, anything, you can call Rogan. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, God, you're fucking right, dude. That sure. was a mistake. I, I've had times where, like, Rogan. We uh, all do that for each other. That's a decent example, right, to pull. Like, you know, Rogan's pretty influential, pretty high up person, pretty famous person. But you can still call him out on his bullshit. You can still kind of speak to him. And he will listen to you in a way, right? Which is complete opposite of Kanye. They're basically going at but then to shoehorn 
what he went through with Rogan and the Dana White situation into it is a real, real horrible name droppy thing that he does all the time. I don't, I don't think there's a single podcast that these guys do where they don't mention fucking Joe Rogan's name. And the funny thing about it is that has he ever been on the fire and the kid? I don't think he has, has he? Has Joe Rogan ever been on a fire and the kid, like in the studio? Even when it was really good, when it was back in the day and stuff, has he ever appeared on the show? He's had them on his show, but has he ever appeared on there? I don't think he has, you know. But they mention this guy every single day. Well, like if I tell you, you've you, done that. You've, and I've done it to you. Yeah. You've done it to me multiple yeah. times. Rogan did, did to me like when I was, and this got so out of hand with the, the conspiracy with Dana and stuff like that. It got out of hand because you kept doubling, tripling down, my friend. That's why it got out of hand. Yeah, you were me joking around. Joking around like this. Oh, Brian Kellen trying to help him out there. He wasn't joking. He was being serious. Got a hand. Like but, you were trying to create. But a then when you put my, but then when you put me against the wall, I'm like, hold, hold on, hold on here, dude. I do con I do nine shows a fucking week. This is something for me to run with, it's and fun. it gives me entertainment. It's fun, yeah. No. I, oh. <sighs> now it's now it was all a joke. It was all a prank. That's what it is. It was a prank, bro. It was a prank. No, it wasn't. You legitimately thought the UFC were colluding with Hamzat Chayev, Ham, oh, sorry, Hamzat Shemaev to flip in, get him to miss weight so that they can change the fight last minute because the tickets weren't selling. That's what you legitimately thought was happening. And then what Hamzat Shemaev ends up running through, flipping, um, what's my guy's name? Um, is it Kevin something, right? I forgot his name. He ends up running through him and making it, making absolute light work of him, probably in the same way you would have done Nate Diaz anyway. But what is this? I caveat it with, I don't believe all this, but if I were going to, yeah, that's what yeah, I do. That's right. And then Dana picks it up. No, you didn't do that. You didn't do that at all. You said you definitely believed it. And I do stuff, and even Rogan was like, what are you doing, dude? Why would, and you're going to make a bit about it? I'm like, I, I need content. Like, for me, it's fun. Yeah. And I, was I, I need content, he's trying to say. So I just make up shit. You hear what these guys are saying? So he just makes up shit and runs with it, even stuff that he doesn't believe, just so you can make up content. Is that what people are doing out here now? Horrendous. So not even a hot take that he actually can stand. This is the thing that's so, you know, pathetic about this whole thing. The whole conspiracy theory was pathetic, but stand on it. Stand on it. Why are you now got back in a way and trying to say it was all a prank? Just stand on it. You're allowed to have an opinion. Maybe someone called it out and said it was dumb, but stand on it. I was like, you know, yeah. I still don't dislike Dana. Yeah. I have fun. He goes, don't do that. Went, all right, you're right. And then when he goes on the show and goes, oh, Brent needs a handler. <laughs> and my friends and family call me like Rogan Tony Handler. I called him. I, I text him. He was. I, I tried calling him. Text him. <laughs> it really hurt his feelings, didn't it? That handler comment really hurt his feelings. But it's legit though. Why wouldn't it be legit? He does need the handler. Do you remember what he said about fucking Eve, Eves Edwards and those guys when he basically insinuated the only reason why they had jobs on ESPN was because they were all black. And then, if I remember correctly. He then apologized to Eve Edwards, Eve Edwards, sorry, via text or something. No, sorry. He apologized to Eve Edwards on Twitter. So I think um, Eve Edwards kind of hit him up public on Twitter and said, hey, what's all this smack you've been talking about me and my friends? And then he immediately started copying, please. Oh, you know, I love black people. I listen to fucking Kendrick Lamar. He's my favorite rapper or something like that. And he was like, oh, chill. It's not about race. I'm just asking you what you're saying, but I appreciate your apology anyway. And then as in classic Brendan Shaw fashion, he went on another show. I forgot what show it was. Some other show. And they asked him about, it. oh, what happened to you and Eve Edwards? And he basically, basically tried, walked back whatever he said on the messages and basically was like, oh, Eve was being emotional. Um, it wasn't a big deal. Like basically tried to like minimize the whole thing and son Eve Edwards on the show. And Eve Edwards was like, okay, enough. And he basically screen grabbed the entire text message thread he had with Brendan, where Brendan was basically copying please and sounding completely opposite to how he was talking online. And then of course, did he reply to that one? He did it. He just kept it moving. So he's known to do this a lot. He's known to kind of do this, talk a big game or talk smack online and be this whole big badass. And then when it gets on text messages, copying please, because he doesn't want the hassle or the blow back from the trolls and then he gets his last word and then kind of runs away same thing he did here it's like come on man come on because just because everyone because i think he he fought this conspiracy theory because everyone hates dana anyway right he's not the most likable person in the world i think even he probably knows that and you know the ufc are known to you know be a little bit uh, a little bit sneaky when it comes to the matchmaking and the ranking and stuff it would make sense that if he said what he said any other time that the 
MMA community, UFC community will kind of rally behind him. But because he's not likable himself, it turned into a little bit of an issue. Do you know what I mean? It kind of blew blew up in his face, basically. So I was like, hey, are you shitting me, dude? Handler? And then he wrote me this long thing, like, you're right, shouldn't have said that. You know, blah, blah. And he gave me his reason. I went, I know, but you don't need, he goes, you're right, shouldn't have said that. You're, 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 you're not helping my cause, dude. I'm already fighting a good fight here. You're not. No, you're not. What good fight? <laughs> it really hurt him, didn't it? That handler comment. And again, it was such a minor comment to make. And it really, really stung him. Not helping me. He was like, you're right. I won't do it again. I was like, yeah, I would never do that, dude. Ever do. But that's what you. But, but Rogan wouldn't make up a fucking conspiracy theory that they're trying to change fights last minute to sell tickets. <laughs> you do the same thing. Too. What are you doing? Why are you on podcast and being silly? I get maybe out of line. Like, I don't know. Joking. We all do it. We all you call me and go, check. you call me. Dude, I listen to that. Whatever is Breakfast Club. Whatever. Dude, I listen. Honey, anyway, that's Brendan basically getting really emotional about it and basically revealing that he had to have a, a, sit, a, a heart to heart with Joe Rogan over text message because he couldn't get hold of him on the phone. Keep that in mind. Joe Rogan let the phone ring out. He didn't want to talk to Brendan on the phone. They had to go through text and he basically said, I'm upset about you saying I need a handler. Like, fucking insane, isn't it? Absolutely insane.